It's faster than any subsonic passenger jet in history at Mach 0.94. But the secret behind the Bombardier Global 8000's insane speed and range? It's not the wings, it's not the fuselage, it's the engine. But how do you build an engine that's fast, quiet, efficient, and strong enough for this kind of range? Let's find out. They needed something that could handle not just long distances, but also the day-in, day-out demands of high-utilization business jets. Think tight turnarounds, minimal downtime and performance under changing weather conditions, without compromise. So they built the Global 8000. But they didn't just want it to be fast. They built it to be the most capable business jet in the sky, flying farther and smoother than anything else in its class. With a top speed of Mach 0.94 and a range of 8,000 nautical miles, it connects cities like Los Angeles and Dubai nonstop. And it does it in luxury. But to push a jet this far at this speed, you need a power plant that can do more than just fly it needs to endure. Bombardier turned to a proven source, but they didn't just copy and paste. The Bombardier Global 8000 is powered by two General Electric Passport engines. They are high-bypass turbofans built for long-haul, high-performance business jets. At first glance, they might not look revolutionary, but once you dig inside, it's a different story. Each engine produces up to 18,920 pounds of thrust, that's more than enough to push the Global 8000 to its world record-breaking performance and keep it efficient at the same time. Before we move on, here's a question we have for the aviation nerds out there. The Passport engine's fan blades are made from something lighter and stronger than titanium. Any guesses? Drop your answer in the comments below and we'll confirm it at the end of this video. To understand the Passport's performance, we need to look at its core. This is where air is compressed, ignited, and turned into pure jet thrust. The Passport uses a 10-stage high-pressure compressor, a single annular combustor, and a two-stage high-pressure turbine. That balance gives it high thermal efficiency and optimal airflow control across a range of altitudes and speeds. The core is compact. It's derived from GE's military and commercial engines like CFM and LEAP programs, but it's been scaled and adapted for business aviation. The result is less fuel burned, lower emissions, higher performance at cruise, this compact design also helps reduce engine weight, which improves the aircraft's overall balance and contributes to its long-range capabilities. By minimizing drag and maximizing thermal output, the engine hits a sweet spot between thrust and economy. Exactly what the Global 8000 needs on a 15-hour intercontinental flight, and it all starts up front. At the front of each Passport engine is a 52-inch composite fan, which is the biggest in its class. But it's not just about size. It's about what it's made of. GE developed the fan using Blisk technology, bladed discs milled from a single piece of advanced material. This design reduces weight, increases durability, and eliminates the need for multiple fasteners that can fail under stress. The fan blades themselves are made of carbon fiber composite with titanium leading edges offering the best of both worlds, strength and lightness. This gives the engine an ultra-high bypass ratio of 5.6 to 1 and allows more air moving around the core than through it. That's a recipe for both thrust and fuel savings. In fact, about 80% of the engine's total thrust comes from this bypass airflow, meaning it's not just quieter, it's more efficient too. But power means nothing if it's too loud to land where it matters. Most business jets aren't just judged by their performance in the sky. They're also judged by how quiet they are when landing near homes or private airfields. That's why the Passport was built with noise in mind. It uses a chevron-shaped nacelle that give it those serrated edges at the back to mix high-speed exhaust with cooler bypass air more smoothly. This reduces the sharp noise transitions that trigger complaints. The Global 8000 meets Stage 5 noise standards, the quietest in the world. Cabin noise is also minimized thanks to better insulation and engine mounting design, making long flights not just fast, but also peaceful. Passengers can sleep, work, or talk without the constant hum that defines older jets. And that's without sacrificing thrust or performance where it really counts. Most jet engines are optimized for takeoff. The Passport, on the other hand, was designed to cruise at high speed and high altitude, at 51,000 feet, where the Global 8000 likes to fly, the air is thin, and efficiency matters. This is where the Passport shines. 
It maintains stable performance across the entire flight envelope, especially between Mach 0.85 and 0.94. That high-speed cruise capability is what allowed the Global 8000 to break records in flight tests, including flying faster than any previous business jet without going supersonic. And it does it with lower fuel consumption than smaller engines used in competing aircraft. This level of cruise efficiency also reduces engine wear over time, extending service life and lowering long-term operating costs. In the business jet world, that adds real value. There is more time in the sky and fewer overhauls. But raw power isn't the whole story. Underneath all that hardware is something just as critical, software. Each Passport engine is fully integrated with digital engine controls and onboard diagnostic systems. These systems monitor everything from vibration levels to fuel pressure in real time. Why does that matter? It means predictive maintenance. It can catch issues before they happen, reducing downtime and improving safety. And for aircraft operating long-range missions, that kind of reliability is priceless. GE calls it a digital twin, a virtual copy of the engine that constantly learns and adjusts based on flight data. This digital twin can even recommend adjustments to pilot behavior or route planning to maximize fuel economy based on past flight data. That's next-level integration between aircraft systems and engine intelligence. And when paired with smart design, it does more than just prevent problems, it makes them easier to fix. Jet engines aren't usually low maintenance, but the Passport was designed to change that. It has fewer parts than comparable engines and modular components that can be accessed quickly. Combined with the real-time health monitoring, this engine requires less scheduled maintenance and fewer overhauls over time. That means lower operating costs and more time in the air for the Global 8000. Scheduled overhauls can be spaced further apart thanks to improved wear tracking, which means more revenue-generating hours for operators. For business travelers, that means getting there faster and with fewer interruptions. In a jet that flies halfway around the world, that kind of reliability pays for itself. And it's not just theory. The Passport engine isn't just a design on paper. It's already proven itself in the field powering the Global 7500 and the 8000's predecessor. Thousands of hours of flight time, real-world performance across the globe, and deep integration with Bombardier's platform make it one of the most tested engines in its class. When Bombardier needed a power plant to break records with the 8000, they didn't gamble on something unproven. They chose a platform that had already delivered and pushed it even further. Feedback from operators of the Global 7500 helped refine the engine's final configuration for the 8000. That real-world data led to tweaks in software and materials to make sure it could handle even longer routes. And those changes aren't just about now. The Passport is powering today's fastest subsonic jet and also shaping the next generation of private aviation. Its mix of digital integration and high-efficiency design with advanced materials is becoming the new standard for long-range travel. Other manufacturers are now borrowing ideas like its composite fans, digital twins, predictive diagnostics because the Passport proved they work at scale. In a world where speed, efficiency, and sustainability are more important than ever, this engine is leading the way. And it's doing it 8,000 nautical miles at a time. While the Passport is optimized for the Global Series today, its core design could inspire the next generation of hybrid or even hydrogen-ready engines. That means it's not just a jet engine, it's a foundation for what comes next. So what are the Passport's fan blades made from? The answer is carbon fiber composite. It is lighter and stronger than metal, which helps reduce weight while boosting efficiency. It's just one of the smart choices that makes this engine a game changer. But that's just one piece of the story. Behind every long range jet or record breaking speed is an engineering system built to go further. And this is only the beginning. There's a whole world of cutting edge aviation tech out there and we're breaking it down one jet at a time. Hit like, subscribe and stick around. The next one might just fly faster. Before it ruled the skies, it ruled the big screen. The F-14 Tomcat stole the spotlight in Top Gun blazing through the clouds with jaw-dropping maneuvers. Off-screen, it was even deadlier, trusted by Navy pilots to win dogfights and survive the toughest missions. This is how it was built. The F-14 was born out of a need for versatility, 
the U.S. Navy needed a jet that could engage both air and surface targets, while also having the ability to adapt to various mission requirements. Its design was revolutionary. With wings that could adjust their angle in flight, the F-14 could maximize speed at high altitudes and lift at low speeds. The challenge was creating a wing mechanism that could withstand the extreme forces of battle while being simple enough for pilots to control at a moment's notice. The engineers were tasked with making the F-14 both powerful and lightweight. The body was made from a combination of high-strength alloys and durable composites. These materials needed to withstand the intense heat and pressure of supersonic speeds and combat conditions. Titanium was used for key structural parts because of its strength-to-weight ratio, but the rest of the aircraft relied on specialized aluminum alloys to maintain the necessary balance between toughness and weight. The fuselage was reinforced with a unique framework that supported not only the wing mechanism, but also housed the complex avionics and missile systems. Building an aircraft with these advanced systems required collaboration between engineers, manufacturers, and military experts to ensure it could serve its intended purpose. Perhaps the most striking feature of the F-14 is its variable sweep wing. These wings could sweep back at speeds over Mach 2, offering optimal aerodynamics for high-speed intercept missions. In contrast, when the wings were extended, they provided increased lift and control for slow-speed operations such as landing and dogfighting. Creating this wing system wasn't a straightforward task. The engineers needed to design a robust mechanism that could handle the immense forces acting on the wings during maneuvers. The sweep system used a combination of hydraulic actuators and an advanced mechanical linkage. Pilots could adjust the wing angle instantly, and the wings would lock in place during flight. Before we move on, here's a challenge for aviation buffs. What material was used in the F-14's wing pivot mechanism to handle the extreme stress of high-speed flight? Drop your guess in the comments, we'll reveal the answer at the end of the video. Powering the F-14 was a pair of Pratt & Whitney TF-30 engines, which gave the aircraft its speed and agility. These engines were capable of producing over 20,000 pounds of thrust each, allowing the F-14 to reach speeds of up to 2,485 kilometers per hour. To maintain this power, the engine intakes were designed to handle large volumes of air at high speeds, ensuring the engines ran smoothly even at extreme altitudes. The challenge of these engines, however, was their maintenance. Early models of the TF-30 had reliability issues which led to modifications in later versions of the F-14, especially with the introduction of the F-110 engines, which offered improved performance and reliability. The F-14 was more than just a fighter jet, it was an advanced weapons platform. Its avionics were cutting edge for the time, featuring radar systems that could detect and track enemy aircraft from over 200 miles away. The radar was linked to the aircraft's weapon systems, allowing the F-14 to engage targets with pinpoint accuracy. One of the most iconic features was its ability to launch Phoenix, Sparrow, and Sidewinder missiles. These weapons were designed to engage targets at varying ranges, making the F-14 a versatile threat in both long-range missile combat and close-quarters dogfights. Its advanced radar and targeting systems were linked to an autopilot system, giving pilots the ability to focus on the bigger picture while the aircraft systems took care of specific targeting and tracking. After the design and production, the F-14 went through rigorous flight tests to ensure it met the Navy's high standards. Engineers had to test the variable sweep wing mechanism, ensuring it could deploy and retract smoothly under extreme conditions. The F-14 also went through high-speed tests to confirm it could achieve Mach 2 and above without sacrificing control. The early test flights uncovered a few issues with the engines, especially with the reliability of the TF-30. While the engines performed well at high speeds, their performance at lower speeds wasn't as consistent. This led to the decision to upgrade to the F-110 engines, which offered better low-speed handling. Once the F-14 was fully tested and the engine issues addressed, it entered full-scale production. The aircraft was built at Grumman's factory where assembly lines hummed with activity. Workers assembled the fuselage, wings, and avionics systems, while specialized teams installed the weapon systems and cockpit. Each F-14 was carefully crafted, with quality control teams conducting checks on every component. The final aircraft rolled out in the early 1970s and was immediately put into service with the U.S. Navy. 
With its variable sweep wings, powerful engines, and advanced radar, the F-14 quickly became a favorite among Navy pilots. It served as the backbone of the Navy's air superiority until its retirement in the 2000s, replaced by newer models like the F-A-18 Hornet. The F-14 didn't just become a symbol of military strength, it became a cultural icon. Its performance in the Gulf War and its prominent role in Top Gun made it a household name. The F-14's design influenced future fighter jets, including the F-22 Raptor and F-35 Lightning II. Its variable sweep wing technology, in particular, was a precursor to more modern innovations in aviation. Even after its retirement, the F-14's legacy lives on in the hearts of aviation enthusiasts and military historians. Its design, engineering, and combat performance continue to inspire jet fighters of today. The F-14 underwent multiple iterations during its service, with each model improving upon the previous. The most significant update came with the F-14D variant, which introduced advanced avionics and more powerful radar systems. These upgrades made the F-14 more capable in long-range missions and target acquisition. One of the standout features of the F-14D was its digital cockpit. This provided pilots with greater precision in handling complex operations and weapon targeting, offering an edge over newer adversaries. Moreover, the engine modifications in the F-14D, especially the transition to the F-110 engines, dramatically enhanced the aircraft's reliability and low-speed performance. In addition to performance upgrades, the F-14D featured better systems for communications and mission integration, ensuring pilots had real-time access to vital intelligence during combat. With a reduced maintenance burden and improved systems, the F-14D remained a formidable asset to the Navy well into the 2000s, despite the emergence of more advanced jets. While the F-14D saw great success, its increasing maintenance costs and the need for advanced multi-role capabilities led to its eventual replacement by the F-A-18 Hornet. However, the F-14's evolutionary design continues to influence modern fighter jets, especially in areas of avionics and aircraft flexibility. The F-14 Tomcat's cultural significance goes beyond its military history. It was cemented as a pop culture icon thanks to its starring role in the 1986 film Top Gun. In the movie, Tom Cruise and Val Kilmer famously piloted the F-14 in high-stakes aerial combat. These scenes captured the agility and power of the aircraft, introducing the Tomcat to a new generation of aviation enthusiasts. The fast-paced dogfights showcased the variable sweep wing's unique ability to transition from high-speed interception to low-speed dogfighting making the F-14 the perfect representation of cutting-edge military aviation in the 1980s. The F-14's role in real-world combat further solidified its reputation. During the Gulf War, the F-14 successfully performed a variety of missions, including air superiority, bombing runs, and long-range missile strikes. The aircraft's Phoenix missile system was particularly instrumental in these operations, offering unmatched range and precision for engaging hostile targets. The Tomcat's portrayal in Top Gun and its real-world combat success made it synonymous with American air superiority. Even after retirement, the F-14 continues to hold a special place in aviation culture, frequently appearing at air shows and in museums, ensuring that its legacy remains intact for future generations. The F-14 Tomcat wasn't just a fighter jet, it was a masterpiece of engineering. And as for our question, what material was used in the F-14's wing pivot mechanism? The answer is titanium. Chosen for its strength, heat resistance, and ability to survive the extreme stress of high-speed maneuvers, it was one of the many innovations that made the Tomcat a legend. Now here's one more question. Would you rather have flown the F-14 in Top Gun or faced off against it in battle? Let us know in the comments, and if you love aviation history, hit subscribe so you don't miss what's coming next.